Hello, Hitman fans! In this video, we follow three mission stories Pest Control, Breadcrumb Trail, and No Smoking Area. Let's proceed! We activate the mission story Pest Control. Let's go to the marker and eavesdrop on a conversation. 47. I've marked your map with several points of interest. We're running this mission with very little upfront intel, but these locations could provide clues to help you obtain the information we need. Good luck. Terminator guy who's working on Batty's house? Same guy who just did Cassidy's, right? Yeah. So I let him use the green shipping container to store some chemicals. <laughs> I asked him if it was poisonous, but he assured me that it was only a sleeping agent. Get this. He told me that he doesn't kill the bugs. He only sedates them so that he can set them free later. Let me get this straight. Nolan Cassidy's neighbor is fumigating his house. The exterminator is not using insecticide, however. He's using a sleeping potion. We need the crowbar to open the green container and retrieve the so-called insecticide. Now we are going to subdue the exterminator and steal his outfit. Drag him into the bushes. Take his outfit. He dropped two keys. Pick them up. One of the keys can be used to access Nolan Cassidy's property. The exterminator fumigated Cassidy's house before he started to work at the house of his neighbor. Add the sleeping agent to the fumigation machine. Now we have to find a way to lure Cassidy inside the house. But first, we disable the surveillance system. Using the pipe, we climb to the upper floor. Cassidy looks to be a gun enthusiast. See that guy? Pacify him if you want the silent assassin rating. Break the glass to trigger the alarm. This is Nolan Cassidy's armory. After he is informed that someone triggered the alarm, Cassidy will come running to the house. He will go straight to the armory to investigate. Now we wait. Let's do this. Nicely done, 47. This should keep things nice and quiet inside the house. Cassidy is asleep on the upper floor. He was a few meters away from the armory door when we pumped the sleeping agent inside the house. Let's get out of here. Nolan Cassidy is down. Good work, 47. James awaits your attention. Next, the mission story Breadcrumb Trail. We go to the marker. seen that Janice's oddball nurse is at it again. Oh yeah, the bird guy. Really. 
Be patient. In a few seconds, you'll be able to interact with the postman. Honey, it's me. You called? Yes, I know. Do you need some help? You know what, friend? I could indeed use some help. It's very kind of you to ask. People Take the package. The are just so friendly. We shall deliver the package to James Batty's house. This whole package delivery business is bullshit. The purpose of the mission story is to make 47 gather clues about Providence. The package has no relevance whatsoever. Ring the doorbell to distract James Batty. While Batty goes to the mailbox, we infiltrate his property. We have the key. We took it from the exterminator. We need to gather three clues that will make Diana figure out the connection between Janus and Providence. There are nine clues in Whittleton Creek. We only need to find three. The first clue is the lawsuit document we find in James Batty's shed. Janus is apparently engaged in a civil lawsuit with another resident of Whittleton Creek. The next clue is a surveillance tape. We find it in the kitchen of Nolan Cassidy's house. The lawsuit also mentions Nolan Cassidy and his unlawful surveillance around town. Hmm. Here it is. I think we're onto something here, 47. Before exiting, let's change disguises. It is not enough to just have the surveillance tape. We need to find out what's on it. A video player can be found in the attic of Lewinsky residence. Follow me. 47. I think it would be beneficial to locate the unlawful surveillance mentioned in the lawsuit. Perhaps Nolan Cassidy's house. We climb the pipe to reach the upper floor. To gain access to the attic, pull this rope. Insert the tape in the video player. Yes. Unfortunately, we must listen to the entire conversation. Agreed. Until then. Excellent. This confirms that Janus and the Constant will meet up soon. I don't think we'll be able to identify the partners today, but this is very useful. The tape doesn't specify where that meeting will take place, however. We need that final bit, 47. The third clue is inside Janus's house. In the basement, to be more precise. I don't feel like waiting until this guy goes away. Let's hide him in the bushes. We continue towards Janus's house. We need to reach the basement. Wait until that bodyguard looks away. Using the crowbar, we open the door. There is a bodyguard in the basement. We wait here until we see him. Crowbar to the head. I think it's time to change disguises. The third clue is an old photograph, and we find it here. That's the last piece of the puzzle found, 47. While we didn't end up with the names or locations of the Providence partners as we had hoped, this at least gives us a clear bead on the constant. We can expect to find him at the annual gathering of the Ark Society in November. Our last mission story is No Smoking Area. Let's go to the marker and eavesdrop on a conversation. The Ark Society annual gathering. Hey. 
47, that's it. That has to be the event where Janus and the Constant are meeting. I'm trying to stop. We can expect to find him at the annual gathering. We can find a pack of cigarettes in the bushes. It should be enough. Before going inside Janus's house, we go in the shed to acquire a wrench. Instead of opening the door, I entered this crate. It happens. Let's go. Janus's bedroom is on the upper floor. The plan is to sabotage Janus's oxygen tank and to make him ignite the oxygen while he attempts to light up a cigarette. Janus is a smoker, but because of his precarious health, he is not allowed to smoke. Someone threw his pack of cigarettes away. It landed in the bushes where we found it. We are going to place the full pack of cigarettes on the table in Janus's bedroom. Now we sabotage the oxygen tank. The silent assassin rating is not just a good idea, it is the law. Turn on this radio. If we just let things happen, Janus won't be the only victim of the explosion. Janus's personal bodyguard, Gunther, follows him everywhere and he will be in the room when Janus lights up a cigarette. We have to make Gunther be elsewhere when the explosion happens. There are two bodyguards on the upper floor. By turning on the radio, we lured one of them here. The wrong one. We take the weapon and hide him in a closet. The radio is still on. The other bodyguard will soon come. Wrench to the head. Turn off the radio. In the closet he goes. Don't forget to pick up any firearms found lying on the floor. Drop a weapon here near the door. We may now consider Janus dead and our silent assassin rating intact. Let me explain. Janus enters the room and sees the weapon on the floor. He turns around and tells his personal bodyguard about it. Gunther picks up the weapon and goes to a weapons crate. He will be away when the explosion happens. But what about the other two bodyguards I pacified? Well, the first one doesn't matter. He was lured by the radio, so I had no choice. The second one was the one who had to disappear. You see, after Janus notices the weapon on the floor, he turns around and tells about it to the nearest bodyguard. We don't want the nearest bodyguard to pick up the weapon and go away. We want Gunther to pick up the weapon and go away. By pacifying the second bodyguard, I made sure Gunther is the one who picks up the weapon. Grave, but without my smokes, I might as well be dead. Janus, Cold War spymaster and first Providence constant. I wonder how much he remembers, how little he cares. As old Trotsky said, just as a lamp. At last, the actions of the first constant catch up with you. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like James. Still. It's so beautiful. I'm really... blew up before he could finish the sentence. He was quoting Leon Trotsky, who was supposed to be the successor of Lenin. The entire sentence reads as follows. Just as a lamp, before going out, shoots up in a brilliant flame, so the state, before disappearing, assumes the form of the dictatorship of the proletariat. The connection between those words and Janus' smoking habits elude me. Anyway, here's the exit. Now I say goodbye, and until next time, read some history. It might prove useful when playing video games. <laughs>